Welcome to True House Stories. I am Lenny Fontana coming out of NYC. And it's been hot, humid, overcast, crazy. We're dealing with Delta variants. Oh, I didn't tell you. We're going back to putting masks on in a moment. Now we're also going to have to show our, our cards to get into the nightclubs and bars. So you have to show you're vaccinated. That's coming in August 17th. That's not from me. That came yesterday from the mayor of New York. But we'll talk about that later. Anyway, we wanted to welcome to the stage a fantastic, fantastic DJ. I know her a long time. We even worked together. She mm-hmm. was able to assemble me on an important project that we did in the 90s, which was amazing. Or should I say more wonderful? I mixed one of one of the best compilations of that time. DJ Mix and Paulette was head of A&R at that time. And DJ Paulette is a fabulous DJ. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's write it out. Fabulous. He speaks up on me. A model. She's also now has reconfigured her Apple time code. She calls herself 2.01 or 2.02. She's got a new operating system that she has now re-geared, but we'll go through all that in a minute and wanted to say thank you, Paulette. As we know, you've just got back to your crazy schedule again of yeah. playing out. You were just telling me off camera, and we're so happy to hear that. You know, all the fans, of course, are happy that you're back full power and moving along nicely. Mm-hmm. Welcome to the show. First, the question I'm going to ask is how you've been doing through COVID. Because that's an important thing. COVID has been, the the COVID experience and the pandemic experience for me has been um, a real journey inwards and a real voyage of discovery. It's it's been a test. You know, I will not lie. It has been possibly the biggest test of, my mental health, my confidence, my, you know, financially, just everything. Because when we were locked down, you know, I'm not married. I live alone. So for the beginning of lockdown, I was on my own every day of the week. And, you know, as a DJ, we do that. That's our life. So in a way, it wasn't really different until I hit the point where I wasn't going to work anymore. And at the beginning, it was like, oh, well, I've got some time off. And then it wasn't time off anymore. It was being prevented from working. And then it was, I'm not earning any money. And then it was panic. You know, so it had to really ride the waves of the developments like that twister is like a real corkscrew ride of, you know, what what we in England jokingly called the Rona coaster. We had to, and I certainly had to ride that Rona coaster till the end. And we're not even at the end of it yet. But fortunately now with the vaccine and um with the the numbers and with testing, you know, we can test ourselves. We can be very much more responsible for how we negotiate this ourselves. Um, I'm feeling a lot stronger through it now. And, you know, one thing does kind of stick with me as I've started to go back to work is that I don't really have a social life still because I'm very nervous. I'm very cautious about going into too many places where I can get popped and pinged by track and trace and prevented from working. Yes, that's the new thing that you guys have, right? Track and trace. I heard, um, not to throw you up, but I heard this past week, 700 people were called into isolation throughout the country, throughout the UK from the club scene and the festivals, which may hurt some of these 
parties and festivals going forward with no staff. So I can understand you say yeah, you can close, a, you can close an entire out. thing down. You can close an entire party down. You can close an entire establishment down. You know, if one person gets popped in a kitchen, um, then everyone that's been working around them for more than 15 minutes <laughs> will get popped as well, has to self-isolate. So you can co completely destroy an entire place of work, you know, an entire bar. You know, you can, bars can, it can shut the whole place down. So as a result of that, that means I am very, very cautious about hanging out places and being too many places any longer than I need to be there because it's just like, I don't want to be popped by somebody that I don't know who's been around for 15 minutes. But still, you know, in My terms dear. of in terms of the parties, though. Hang on, hang on. You don't even have to be 15 minutes from what I understand now. One the meter. Barrier, it's like chicken pox. It's within like three minutes you're already... If oh, they, they say in three minutes with the... Oh, it's ridiculous uh, now. It's, it's, that cont it's worse than the first round. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. why you don't know... If they look clean and serene, you don't know if they're if they're you know if they're carriers. It's crazy. Yeah, you don't you don't know, which is why I think with a lot of well, most of the parties in the UK now are asking for either proof of negative test or proof of double vaccination before entry. And with that, you know, we're, we're trying to control. And a lot of people are complaining about that. Well, it's it's, it's controversial. Right? It's massively controversial because it's saying that, you know, we're, we're, this is a democracy and people can do what they want. And yes, people can do what they want. But if you get one person with COVID in a club, <laughs> you know, it shuts it down for everybody. So... Either you want to party and we we party responsibly or we risk being in lockdown for the next two years, three years, which nobody wants. So we are kind of asking people to party responsibly and to come into the parties with that attitude of we're keeping everybody and ourselves safe while we're here. Unfortunately, unfortunately, in the perfect world, that's a great way of looking at it. But you know, and everybody knows that's watching this, knows the same thing I'm thinking. You always get one idiot out of the bunch to wreck it for everybody. Well, this is what they've got. This is the problem that they've got in Ibiza at the moment. Because um, I saw a story two days ago saying that the Ibiza government have... Um, advertised for people aged 30 to 40 years old who are basically going to be party spies, <laughs> um, you know, linked to the police force, but they're going to be party spies because they, the police force have realised that the people who are putting on these illegal parties, villa parties, beach parties, you name it, they know who the police are. They know who the policemen are because Ibiza is a small island. So they're recruiting people. Moles, everyone. Moles. Well, basically moles. Capital to, go F into, to go into these parties and, and bust and them up. Bust them up and shot them and you snitches and snitch on them for not following the regulations because Ibiza is currently under another wave of. Um, COVID. All right. Children of the night, mm. do the right thing. Listen do to the right me. thing. Listen to do Auntie it. Paulette. Auntie Paulette knows. <laughs> she's telling you. She's telling you the right information. Play right. Don't play yeah. wrong because we don't want to be three years in the box. Feels like isolation, right? Three yeah. years of penitentiary time. Feels like we're going to be in prison again. It is. And, and you know, with that, you, if we really want to have a social life, have any sort of social life, 
enjoy the arts, enjoy the theatre, enjoy the cinema, have our freedoms, then there, there has to be um, a little bit, well, a lot of give and take here. You know, if we want to enjoy those freedoms, then we have to do it safely. And then if we do it safely, then we can enjoy it more. And if we're all vaccinated, then we can really enjoy it. Okay. On that note, let's move on. Let's go. Yeah. I know it's very contentious. I know it's controversial and people will probably be shouting me down. Oh, they're screaming at us right that. now. How dare you tell us about your religion and yeah. your thought process? You know what yeah. I say? We have to speak about it. We have to blow it out because we're dealing with it every day. It's all around us all day. It's inevitable. What are we going to do? Not talk. Oh, let's be politically mm. correct. We won't talk mm. about it. Mm. This show is called True House Stories for a reason. To tell the truth. Yes, big and time. That doesn't mean if we agree or not, you need to tell the truth. That's one of my favorite t-shirts. I have a t-shirt with tell the truth written on it. Damn I'm right. Going. Tell the truth. I'm going to have it tattooed on my forehead. Tell that damn truth. Worth it? (laughs) Worth it. Everybody knows I'm going to ask that first question. How Uh, does music find a young Paulette? In music, I like to think that music found me in my mum's belly. Because my mum, Blanche, was a singer. She was a really superb jazz singer and she sang cabaret as well and gospel. And she was very much on the club circuit when I was conceived. And she also owned a nightclub. She was part owner of a nightclub in Manchester called the Ebony Club. And I like to think that while my mum was going out and singing and while she was practicing and singing and, you know, while she was running a nightclub and I was absorbing these vibes. So certainly when I came out of my mum's tummy, legend has it, Legend has it, because I have a twin sister, legend has it that my mum's waters broke while she was on stage at the Free Trade Hall singing with her band. And she ignored the fact that her waters broke and did the whole gig before, um, so, you know, she she came off, did her encore and then came off stage and told the stage manager that she was in labor and then she was carted off in an ambulance and then out popped me and my twin on the 22nd of December. Is it, you know, I, th- this is another thing. I didn't know you had a twin. Ah, uh, yeah, I do. I have a twin sister, an identical twin sister. Identical? Yeah, 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 yeah. Have I got a picture? This is an old picture. It's an old one, but... Oh, wow. Wow, so, wow, yeah, wow. I have a an identical twin. And no, my und- identical twin cannot DJ. <laughs> She's really bad at it. She also doesn't have any... She's really good with music. She's just a fantastic jazz dancer. She's called Paula. Paula and Paulette, as you do with yeah, twins. Paula and Paulette. I know, I know, I know. You can get the laugh out now. Um, Because everybody, whenever we tell people our names, they're like, oh, were your parents short of of an idea for children's names? Why do they name you like so closely together? But anyway, the the music story is my mum was on stage. She went into labour, out popped me and my twin on the 22nd of December. And after then, all of my family, I've got six, six sisters and one brother. My twin and I are the youngest. And all of us are into music. All of us bought records. 
all of us listened to the radio and were just crazy about particular styles of music. So there was everything in our house from, you know, my mum would listen to Mahalia Jackson. She'd listen to Bessie Smith. She'd listen to Billie Holiday, Dinah Washington, um, Sachima. My mum loves Sachima, Louis Armstrong. She loves um, and my dad liked Vic Damone and, and then my sisters, um, everything from Northern Soul to um, T-Rex, glam rock to um, Genesis and Led Zeppelin. And my brother liked the Rolling Stones, but he also liked lots of disco. Elizabeth was into disco, Evelyn Champagne King, Heatwave, Earth, Wind and Fire, Prince, Tina Marie, that was Elizabeth. Audrey was um, Steve Wonder, Roy Ayers, um, just the, there was everything, all music going on. And then my twin, you know, when we got into buying music, my twin was into electro, you know, so Two Sisters, High Noon, you know, she was bringing in like the real, um, you know, the real electro b-boy breaker sound and then also lots of jazz so she you know Paula was very much into um jazz dancing and you know so there was lots of music in the house so we kind of absorbed it by osmosis the radio was always on if my mum had to go out she'd leave me and my twin sat either side of the radio and say don't move <laughs> and and she'd go out and we'd start to cry and then we'd tune in to the radio to whatever song was on the radio we'd tune in and then we'd start to listen so that 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 it came first of all through singing my mum's a singer and then second of all it came through the family because there was just music all the time and then when I went to school I was taught to play the violin and the piano and and um took up saxophone for a bit but I was really bad, <laughs> really bad at the saxophone but I was really good at the violin and I was really good at the piano for a while but then I gave up because I started clubbing oh shame 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 yeah, I know, I know. I think if there's any regret in my life it's for for stopping playing an instrument and stopping reading music because I was really good at it you know I did my grade three violin when I was like eight years old so you know we were pretty we played first violin till we were in an, an orchestra till we were about 15 oh, wow. so, <laughs> you know we um you know musically um you know that there, there there is a very very strong and solid musical foundation to who I am before I even talk about building a record collection. And so that's mm -hmm. how music found me through school, through my mum, through my family, through school, through the radio. Uh, let, me, <laughs> let me ask you a question. You, you said you have how many siblings? I've got six sisters and one brother. You said your mom sang professionally, correct? Yes, she did. Well, how did she find time to be raising all of you guys and singing and all that? Because I was raised but by I wolves. Really I was <laughs> raised by wolves. I was raised by my sisters. <laughs> you know, my mum was working, yeah. so I was raised by my sisters. Because running a club and then singing and everything? Yeah. I'm working in the day. She worked, you know, my mum had held down two or three jobs and then you know there were eight of us that, you know you don't get to raise eight kids without multitasking on the job front you know sure, <laughs> it's just sure. impossible. Are, you, are you also of caribbean background yeah jamaican because there's always a funny anecdote that goes with that you know jamaican they say one job you lazy you must have like eight jobs. Husband, <laughs> factory worker, uh, Listen, doctor, dentist. Do it all. Do it all. Right. Do it's it all. like, because I've heard that before. You know, the American Jamaicans say, one job. That's lazy. Yeah. You must yeah, have like yeah, eight yeah, jobs. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, yeah. Going, I'm going, 
She's got X amount of siblings. The mom is working, owns the Ebony Club. I'm thinking, no, this can't be possible. I'm yeah, she, she's working. She part owned the club. She was singing at night. She was yeah. also, at one point she was studying for a degree. She went yes. to Oxford for three years, did a degree in economics, came back, you know, went to Manchester University, did a degree in sociology, then went off to Birmingham and did another degree in social services. My mum is just like, you know. Serious. I'm tired already, guys. I know, I know. I just hearing that, I'm like, and then having the kids to dick, because you know, if anybody that's a parent knows this, Ma, dad, ma, I need this. Ma, it's like, and you're in the middle of trying to get a degree at Oxford, run a club, do it. It's like, what? Yeah. yeah. Well, well that's, that's the joy mom. of having a big family, though, isn't it? God because, bless your mother, man. That's right. God I, bless my sisters and brothers because. I was going to say, know, God, God bless your mom for having some great. <laughs> God bless your mom for creating some good, good kids that good. actually took the reins and handled being the parents. Yeah, yeah. That's incredible. Big time. I think that's why I'm such a child anyway, because I was raised by wolves. I was raised by kids. The wolves. <laughs> I will never, ever, I will never, ever be, um, you know, a super serious adult because of my upbringing, I think. I think. Right. It keeps you young. Are you? So you went clubbing. Hmm. This is what I want to hear now. Very young. <laughs> I started clubbing. I started clubbing when I was fifteen, and um, when I started clubbing, my sisters were going out to clubs, and they were into soul music and disco and rare groove, which I loved. But I wanted to do something for myself. I wanted to have my own friends and my own music that wasn't like theirs. So I'd already started following a lot of electronic music, craft work, the music coming out of Sheffield, Human League, Cabaret Voltaire. I liked the music you? coming out of Basil Dunn, Sir De Pesh Mode and, and, and um, John Fox and all sorts of music like that. And then a lot of post-punk stuff. So Dead Kennedys, Joy Division, um, New Order. Um, and then the more sort of glam side. So I love Roxy Music, love David Bowie, have all the albums, Roxy Music the same, Grace Jones the same. So I just built this persona and a, a music collection around me that kind of said who I was a lot more than disco, soul and funk. And I I was the different one in the family. So I had the different music. I had, you know, Velvet Underground, Lou Reed, Rolling Stones. That that was, you know, when when I was building my record collection, that was what I was buying. And the, and when I was going out to clubs, that was what I was dancing to, you know. Fad Gadget, Love, B-52s, The Cramps, you know, all of that, you know, kind of freaky stuff. Okay. And then I like Sylvester, Disco, love it, love it. Yeah, no, I hear you, I hear you. It, it, it's an eclectic, look, what you're explaining is what Larry LeVan played at the garage during that, that time of the 80s. That music, he was taking a lot of electronic stuff and he was mixing with disco, and I hear it. What you were saying about having your own, you know, your own tracks that became your anthems more mm. so than what your sister and your brother were listening to, basically others, you wanted to be part of your own. Basically. Yeah, but you know what Rage you also have machine. to remember. Rage against the machine. Rage what you against. also have to remember is that a lot of the music I was listening to, even though it was electronic, I mean, hip hop, possibly wouldn't exist without craft work. So, you know, and, and a lot of disco wouldn't exist without Giorgio Moroder. So the, the European electronic side had a lot of disco, had a lot of soul, had a lot of funk to it. And even, you know, when I think about Cabaret Voltaire, I followed them not so much because they were different and angular, angular and weird, but because it had funk. It had a baseline it had a groove to it and and that 
that was the kind of um, electronic music I was following. I wasn't following the really super tinny, um, not very melodic stuff. It had to have a melody. It had to have a bass line. It had to have a groove and beats right. for me. So that that that's always how I've been driven with music. It had to have a melody. And I like voices as well. So I was always attracted to um, really strong, distinctive voices. So, hey, anyway, Gary Newman, Cars, it's got funk. <laughs> No, it's got funk, it's got swing, yeah. it's got groove there. You know, I I will argue that till the cows come home. A lot of new order. I mean, new order is Arthur Baker anyway, so. True, very yeah. true. Confusion, confusion, confusion. So yeah. on, the, on the, I'm going to guess you had another career before this did. Don't miss the rest of this wonderful interview. Search for part two on the internet and listen to the rest of the story.